WCTN WTJR presents Friends of Wild Olive Branch Ministries with Kyle Kopp and David Vance, serving the Yeshua. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. And now, today's message. Welcome in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua, the Son of God. I'm Kyle Kopp, here with David Vance, and we are the friends of the Wild Olive Branch Ministries. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Yes, sir. How are you today? I am blessed in the field, blessed in the city, blessed on the road, blessed in the studio, blessed everything I set my hand to, everything I set my hand to prospers. Amen. Amen. God's good. That's right. He is. God's good. You know, we've got a decision to make every day. From the moment from the moment our eyes open to the moment our eyes close, what are we going to have to say about things? Why don't we t why don't we just speak blessing? Well, the the world's full of cursing. We should say what God says to a say. Amen. Whatever he puts in our heart from his word, those are the oracles and the things we need to speak. You know, a lot of us talk way too much. <laughs> That'd be, I'm and, one of those folks at times. You know, I saw a picture the other day and it had the picture of a fish with a line coming down with a hook on it that says, even a fish doesn't get in trouble if he keeps his mouth shut. <laughs> so, Say that again. That's good stuff. <laughs> even a fish doesn't get in trouble. If he keeps his mouth shut, yeah. and there's this hook right there. And the there. hook's right there. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So you, you keep out of danger a lot of times if you keep your mouth shut. Amen. Uh, That's a fact. Too. But there's also time to speak, and well, the guy wants to do that. And there is. But, but boy, you know, the Word talks about <laughs> idle words. Right. You know, uh, Jesus said, let your yes be yes, and your no <coughs> be no. Yep. And, and, and those are just good words of instruction. Absolutely. You know, the book of Proverbs, basically, this is, I, don't, I can't give you a specific, but I know at one moment in my, in my Christian reading of the word, you know, the, what came through my mind was, as I read that particular part, was, was uh, even a fool can look wise right. if they keep their mouth shut. That's correct. That's correct. You know, and so it's something we just need to be mindful. That's right. Let me pray and, and we'll talk here for a while. Father in heaven, we stand in awe of you. First and foremost, we want to give glory and honor and praise to you. Amen. We lift you up. You are worthy to be worshipped. You are worthy to be magnified and adored. <laughs> and Lord God, we do. We just praise you and worship you. Stand in awe of you. You are the Most High God. You are the soon coming King. And we desire to bring glory unto your name. Lord God, I thank you that you anoint today this show. That you reach out to those that are in the listening audience. and That you touch them wherever they are. May our words be your words. And may they be a blessing to those that are in the listening audience to receive it. Father God, we thank you for this country, the United States of America. We do not take lightly the commission that you've placed before us to pray for the leaders of our country. So we pray for the leadership. We pray for our country. We thank you, Lord. We, we, we plead your blood over it. We cry out to you in repentance in Jesus' name. Ask that you would have mercy on this country. Have mercy on the, on the leadership of this country. Draw us into right standing before you, Heavenly Father. We thank you for the men and the women in the field, that they're protected. Pray that they come to know you, the living God, through the Lord Jesus Christ. And as always, Lord, we want to give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, I haven't taken a moment to share with the folks. Uh, I uh, we just want to take a few minutes here. You know, back in December, uh, we took the annual trip that we've become accustomed to helping provide for, and people have pitched in, not only from all the wonderful churches in WTJR, but even some churches back at Farmer City and, and some of the 4-H clubs. We worked on the shoebox gifts. We got those we got them loaded up at Farmer City. We drove over here to Quincy and got a whole heap of bunch more. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless you for all those of you that contributed. 
Uh, we got them packed in the trailer, Big Bob and I did. Uh, we drove. Uh, that was on a Monday. We were here at 10. I can't remember where we got to Monday night, but it was a fair piece. I just don't remember right now. It seems like somewhere maybe in Oklahoma. And then we spent the night, got up the next morning, drove into Dallas, and we picked up Dorothy, Dorothy Navarra. She is the widow of John Navarra, and she is now the CEO, as it were, of Helping Hands Ministry. And we picked her up, and we took her with us on down to Del Rio. Now, you think, well, you're in Texas. That's no big deal. Well, you know, it's seven hours <laughs> from her place at Dallas to the ministry headquarters in Del Rio. <laughs> seven hours. So uh, we got down there Thursday evening. Um, uh, I, uh, we, we stayed. We got, I got Dorothy a room. She usually stays with a friend there while she's in Del Rio. <laughs> And the gal had inadvertently locked her out. <laughs> so so we just I just decided I was gonna bless her and we got Dorothy her own room and then and then Bob and I and and we got checked in there on that would have been Tuesday evening. Wednesday she started making preparations and went to visit with Alice. Alice is her I would what I would call her hands on the ground there in Del Rio, because Dorothy's residing in Dallas now most of the time as they've been trying to pass the ministry on to the nationals and to some folks there that are, can be more hands-on. Well, Alice and her coordinated some on Wednesday. Then on Thursday, we came and we loaded the, the extra trailer from my trailer to her husband, Alice's husband's trailer. And then on Friday morning, Dorothy <coughs> and Alice's husband and herself, I can't remember Alice's name, or Alice's husband's name. I don't know that I could pronounce it if I could remember it. But, but he's a Mexican national, which was able to make it easier to get things across the border. Um, they actually gave us a break at the border. They usually charge us a pretty hefty fee to get in uh, with the gifts, uh, duty, whatever they call it. Uh, but it was about $75 less than I had given Dorothy, because I always give her that cash to go in. Usually it's anywhere from $200 to $500. Last year it was almost $400. Well, this year it was under $300. So she gave that extra money then uh, to Pastor Oscar on the ministry side. I told her that was perfectly fine. And uh, got the gifts in, got them to Oscar, uh, got them to the bodega, which is their storage facility. And then through the rest of the month of December, the, the gifts and the blankets were distributed. And uh, there'll be pictures forthcoming. Oscar himself was going to take some pictures and get them either emailed or text to Dorothy. And when we get those, we'll share them with you. Um, it was an incredible blessing. You know, Dorothy, I would ask that you, all of you in the listening audience would please pray for her and pray for the ministry. Um, uh, I, I don't want to give too much credence to the enemy, but I will just say the enemy's been bringing many, many, many challenges to her, to her family uh, on a very personal nature. And uh, just lift her up in prayer, you know, uh, uh, plead the blood over her, place a hedge around her and her family. Uh, continue to pray for the ministry. She is full on. She is she is all about continuing to see this thing move forward. God is moving in her. I mean, the scriptures that came out of her as we traveled to Dallas and back from Dallas, it's 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 plain to see that she's immersed in the Word and and wanting to do God's will. So please pray for Dorothy Navarra and please pray. Uh, she has two sons, Todd and David, and pray for Todd and David. Pray for their families, etc. Um, recently, when the tornadoes went through northeast Texas, um, it went right through the communities where her and her sons have their homes. Their homes were untouched, but they were just a short distance away from many homes that were destroyed there in Garland, Texas. We're thankful for his protection upon her and upon the boys. And we just want to give God glory for that. Uh, but please, please be praying for her. And, um, you know, all, you have been a very vital part of what WTJR has done to help promote this shoebox ministry. And we want to continue it. We want to continue to move forward with it until we believe the Lord has us to go a different direction. We're going to continue. And in the meantime, I really would cover your prayers for those folks and, and for those here at WTJR. I have to say that three times fast. WTJR and... Uh, it just wanted to let you all know, but it was a good trip, brother. Yeah, good. Yeah. And uh, it was it was uneventful. I didn't go on. I guess I said uneventful. What I mean by uneventful is 
we only drove in a little bit of light rain when we left to go down there, and that was it. Oh, wow. You know, and there have been times that Bob and I have went through ice storms, snow storms, yeah. you know, because you get into that panhandle of Texas. And you don't know what the Yeah, the, you don't know. You think Texas, it's, it's south and it's warm, but it doesn't always work that way. No. There's been times it's been 60 degrees here in Quincy, and, it's, and, and you're in freezing rain in Amarillo, Texas. And they don't handle freezing rain well. You, your best, <coughs> you just get off the road. That's right. Because I, those folks, they don't handle it well. That's, that's a nice way to say it. I had a son that lived in Texas for a while. They're crazy down there <laughs> with snow and ice. They, they, just, they don't drive in it, you know. Right. Right. And and they just, they forget that it's slick. Yeah, well, you keep off the brake. You <coughs> slow out. Don't panic. Drive slow. And until that car turns into a into an ice skate on top of the ice, that you realize it pretty quick. But 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 it's amazing, isn't it, how, how quick we are to forget yeah. when we don't deal with it regularly. Yeah. You know, and, and there are times, you know, people say that as a criticism, but honestly, brother, I think that's hardwired into our hearts, especially as believers, because, you know, the word tells us that he takes our sins and throws them as far as and when we repent, that he throws our sins as far as the east is from the west, and remembers them no more. Right. Well, I'm glad that sometimes I can forget that treachery and the madness because, because, boy, you dwell there, it can consume you the wrong way. It can Okay. I realize I took a real hard look <coughs> at it, but it's absolutely true. Absolutely. You know, absolutely. And, uh, but it, it, it was. Good trip. Glad, always glad to be home. But boy, more than ever, they, I, will, I will share one more thing here. Um, the climate, as it were, the political and uh, all that goes on in Mexico really isn't much different than it's been the last four years. There's just nobody goes across the border. Almost all the shops right across the border have closed. Um, a tremendous amount of fear because of the cartel still. Yes, the military's come in. I would say they've at least stabilized it, but it certainly hasn't gotten better. It's a very, very different world there than it was when I first went over there yeah. 16, 18 years ago. Yeah. Unfortunately. <clears throat> because with that, it's, it's, I'm thankful for Oscar. Pastor Oscar and the folks that are, that are there ministering the gospel because those people desperately need that faith that they can put their trust in to our Heavenly Father and to the Lord Jesus Christ right. because fear is rampant, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we, we're seeing hints of that now in America. And, you know, in the, in the last several weeks here, you've had the whole San Bernardino situation where they come in and shot those folks and and, uh, you know, I, I had someone recently come to me, and, uh, I mean, they're, they're just kind of freaked out about all this. And, and, and what I told them, I said, listen, I said, as a believer, we have to trust not only for his provision and for our health and all these wonderful things, but you have to remember he wants us safe, too. Yeah, man. He wants to protect us, spirit, <coughs> soul, and body. So listen, everybody, in spite of the craziness that, that's in the world right now, in spite of all the things that are yet to come, we have to focus on the Word and what the Word has to say for us as believers. There are promises after promises after promises, and we have got to keep our focus and our hearts turned towards Jesus, not live in the fear of what's about to happen next. Right. You know, and it's hard. Well. It's hard. But it can be done. Absolutely. Can. Part of it's uh, ordering your day, which we, we've talked about that before. When you spend time with the Lord in the mornings, yeah. early morning, whatever, yeah. you, you, you know, ask God what's, what's about, what's to take place. What are, you, what are you to do? Where are you to go? You know, and if you obey Him, you know, the Holy Spirit can keep you totally away from any of that stuff. Yeah, but you got to you got to be able to hear his voice clear and sharp, and to trust him that he knows what's best for you. Yeah, and so on and so forth. And you don't have to let fear rule your life. Amen. Matter of fact, uh, the word's very plain. You know, fear's not of God. You know, that's right. But he just he gives us love and a, and a, and a sound mind. He does. So we don't have to allow fear. 
to to rule or even intimidate us, really. I agree. <clears throat> so. Well, I, I sat with a group of guys that they call those the liars table at the cafe. I personally am not one of those, but but that's how they kind of coin it. You know, all these old farmers get together, and and I'm not an old farmer. I'm a middle-aged farmer. That's what I'll call myself. <laughs> But uh, you're a pup yet. Yeah, a pup. That's right. That's right. Amen, brother. Preach it. I'm a pup. I'm. I'm amen. <laughs> but uh, you know, they were talking about. They were talking. One of the gentlemen got on the subject of radical Islam, and mm -hmm. you know, well, you know, I don't believe that all those all those folks are evil and so on and so forth. And I looked right at all of them and said, "Listen, those folks. Jesus Christ died for them too. Said these words, and I said, and if they'll repent." And ask Jesus into their hearts, they shall be saved, just just as plain as, as for every other person. However, I said, I take exception with your, it's just the radicals. Here's what I'm going to say, and I'm going to say this publicly, I'm going to say it on the air. You have your radical Islamic folks and your moderates. The only difference between the moderate and the radical is, is that the moderate still fears for their own life. But they are happy that they have the radicals who are willing to give their life for the cause because they fundamentally believe that unless we convert to Allah, that we are worse than infidels and deserve death. That's what the Quran teaches. Right. Okay? And people get all kinds of <coughs> upset and all kinds of shook up and, and what do you believe? And man, you're that's pretty you that's hate speech. And one guy accused me of that. And I said, No, no. I didn't say I hate him. I said, I just want you to understand what we're dealing with. The Australian people, it's been three or four years ago, they stood up and told those folks, no Sharia law, right. you obey the laws of the land here in Australia, or you will leave our country. Right. Okay? And that, those are strong words. But I'm telling you, this is a time where we have to be strong as well as a country. Well, Putin did the same thing with Russia. He did, didn't he? Yeah, just recently. Wow. Yeah. Now, isn't that, isn't that amazing? Because uh, I'm not saying they're a totally godless country, but pretty close. Of course, America's not far behind, you know, the way it appears, okay? But, and I don't know what he fundamentally believes or doesn't believe, but even he recognizes sure. that there's a problem here. Well, yeah, there is, because they're a very volatile group, and, and you know, he, he's not going to put up with it, basically, <laughs> is what he's saying. Yeah. So. Well, I pray that, that the leadership of our country <clears throat> figure this out as well. I agree. You know, and, and you know, I, boy, there was one, I had one guy, he, he picked up his phone, okay, and he's got on the face of his phone, you know, how they get all these little sayings, and it's a picture of a cowboy from the back, and it says, it says, we're about ready to pay cowboys and Muslims. I kind of gritted my teeth, but then I thought to myself, how inaccurate is that? And, and, uh, and now listen, I'm not talking about fear, everybody, uh, but I think it does well for you folks to listen a little bit, because what I'm talking about today here in this show, I know isn't politically correct, okay? And I don't want us to live in fear. My brother just shared, you know, we need to seek the Lord. We need to be before his face so that he can show and reveal to us things that we need to know. But I'm telling you, and I agree with that 110%, especially to all of you that are out there that are genuine believers in the Lord Jesus Christ and have surrendered your life to him. But I'm pretty confident that there's not everybody out there on the air right now that, that, that knows Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. And I said Lord before Savior. And Lord means to surrender, to give your life to, to show submission to. Okay, he is your Lord. Everybody wants a Savior from hell, but that's not what this thing's about. We've shared that many times on the air. But I would be remiss if I didn't say <coughs> to you that there, 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 are, there, are some, there are some horrendous things coming to planet Earth. And you need to be aware so that you can learn to pray that you can learn to search the scriptures to understand what the scriptures have to say about your protection because because at, at some juncture at, at some point we are going to lean and have to know that our relationship is secure with our Lord Jesus because of, of, of the coming battles that are coming that, that just remind when you were talking there the Lord just dropped this into my 
had years ago, <clears throat> quite a few years ago now, I uh, was putting corn in a corn crib. Okay. That's been a long time ago. That's been a while. I haven't had my corn crib for several years <laughs> yeah, now. But, that's true. But that's all right. But And it was in a wagon, and it was ear corn. But I had two of my sons were up, wanted to see the corn go down into the elevator. So I said, well, you be real careful because if you slip and fall, you know, you'll be sucked to the bottom. Well, my wife was out there as well. We only had two children at that time. And so I <clears throat> began to unload the corn, open up the door, and it wasn't very long. She ran around and says, shut it off, I shut it off. Michael's just fallen into the corn. And so we immediately started praying in the Spirit. And this is why you need the baptism of the Holy Ghost, folks. Amen. Because it bypasses your mind. And yes. The Spirit of God knows exactly what to pray. That's right. Well, <clears throat> we both started praying. I climbed up into the wagon and was feverishly trying to find anything of my son. I couldn't find a shoe, couldn't find a leg, part of a body, shirt, nothing. And... I heard the voice of the Lord at that time, and this is why yeah, I say it's I, so critical. I, yes. Even in times of infinite peril, you have to attune your ear to be able to hear the instruction from the Holy Spirit. Amen. He told me to climb out of the, out of the wagon and go down and open the door. So, because it had, still had a lot of corn in it. And... <clears throat> So I did that, and he rolled out into my, into my arms. My son did. Wasn't even crying. He, he hadn't, you know, he, he didn't even recognize the danger. Right. But <clears throat> the Holy Spirit knew that he was already at the bottom of that wagon yeah. at the door yeah. uh, with lots of corn above him, obviously. And, uh, and he rolled out into my arms. But the key thing I want you to know is, and all glory to God for this, because in, even in times that of great distress, I heard the voice of the Lord Amen. and acted upon it Amen. and was obedient to it. Right. And I am fully confident it saved the life of my son. Yeah. <clears throat> so... I, I, with what my brother's saying, yeah, we could be in danger many times, but, and, and the words got a couple of different places where there's always a way of escape. Okay, so, uh, but you have to hear the voice of the Lord. You have to train your, your spiritual ears to hear what he's saying to you. That is, I find that one of the most critical junctures to be successful in any spiritual walk. You have to be able to hear and discern that it's the Lord speaking and that he's giving you a certain direction and that you need to be obedient as your part and to do it I agree. Not, not two hours later. I agree. <clears throat> Not three weeks later, I agree. but immediate, because God is a God of now. That's right. He's a now God. He's not. He's not the God of the future, although He is. He's not the God of the past, although He was. He is now, now. and and He wants us to live in that godly realm, in the present all the time, and 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 it's possible, but it takes. It takes self-discipline, it takes self-control, it takes a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Because the Holy Spirit's the one that's here now. Yeah. Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father interceding on our behalf. Amen. Therefore, you know, we have to get our instruction from the Holy Ghost. We do. So my whole point to this was no matter whether you're in infinite danger or there is serene cal uh, calmness, about you, you still have to hear with your ear what the Spirit of God is saying. And the Scripture is full of it in the New Testament. You know, those that have ears to hear, hear let them hear. Yeah, hear. Yeah. So, 
We need you, you, you need to develop that if you if you can't hear God. Try. Uh, I agree. It, it, it's most critical. Uh, I, I can't emphasize how critical it is because it will be a could be a lifesaver. Many times it is. It needs to become <clears throat> our nature. Let me t share a quick story. Just recently, our pastor was praying on, on a Saturday night for our service. He saw the music leader hauled off to the hospital in an ambulance. The Spirit of God told him that everything was going to be all right. So he gets to the service. He's up there playing, leads praise and worship fine. And then as he's preaching, he notices that he gets up and goes to the restroom for a much longer period than normal. Then he came out and leaned against one of the posts. And he thought, I didn't hear God, didn't hear God speak yet. But that morning, he had also had the same vision. Uh, he saw the worship leader on a cot going to the hospital. So right at the end of the service, he was up just playing softly as uh, our pastor was ministering the word, or uh, finishing up the word. And he comes down and he taps him on the shoulder and says, I just don't really feel well. And immediately he had, he had summoned the usher and already told him what to do. Call 911. Long story short, they came, took him. Immediately the EMTs recognized it was a heart problem. And when he got to the hospital, they had already given him a lot of stuff for the heart and so on and so forth. They told him that if he had not got to the hospital when he did, he was set to have a major, major heart attack. Wow. 98% wow. clogged in one, 99 in another. Crazy. But God. the Spirit of God told our pastor what. And, he, and recently he just told that to another friend of his about his daughter, she went and was saved. Uh, uh, with She was pregnant with something with the blood, wasn't quite right. They did that analysis and Praise God. Sa saved her and the baby. So it's critical that you hear the voice of the living God. Amen. And you can not only hear for yourself, but for others as well. That's right. <clears throat> so we thank you for tuning in and we speak blessings to you, Kyle and I do, and, and uh, we, we want the best for you in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>